Welcome again. Right now we're at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Five offices of Christian service. Paul continues his letter to the saints in Ephesus saying, I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called. Let's not forget, we are reading a letter that was written by someone in prison. Just because it is illegal doesn't mean it's wrong. And likewise, just because it's legal, according to the law of men, doesn't mean it's right. Just because people are locked up doesn't mean they should be. And just because people are walking free doesn't mean they should be either. Paul was a prisoner when he wrote this. With all lowliness and humility, no pride there. With patience, bearing with one another in love. That's true love. True love without pride, humility. Being eager to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you also were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in us all. And may I add, there is one word of God, one law, and one gospel. And that gospel was preached to Abraham, as Paul clearly said in his letter to the saints in Galatia. But to each one of us, the grace was given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to the people. And that is found in Psalm 68, verse 16, as Paul always quoted the Tanakh to substantiate his doctrine. Now this, he ascended, what is it but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? In other words, Christ was buried. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. That doesn't literally mean fill all things. I mean, like Jesus is not in this pen, okay? What it means is that he occupied all levels of authority. He gave some to be, one, apostles, and some, two, prophets, and some, three, evangelists, and some, four, shepherds, which also means pastors, and number five, teachers. Let's go over this again. One, apostles, two, prophets, three, evangelists, Four, shepherds, pastors, that is. Five, teachers. For the perfecting of the saints. Perfecting, powerful word, of the saints. To the work of serving. Serving, again, another powerful word. To the building up of the body of Christ. That means exhorting you, encouraging you, strengthening you. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a full grown man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we may no longer be children, tossed back and forth and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in craftiness after the wiles of error, but speaking truth in love, we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom all the body being fitted and knit together through that which every joint supplies, according to the working in measure of each individual part, makes the body increase to the building up of itself in love. Some people today, they believe that if you come against them and say what you're doing is wrong, if you say that anything they do is wrong, if you say they sin, that their lifestyle is a lifestyle of sin, oh, you're not speaking in love, oh, that's hate, that's hate. All of the teachings of loving your neighbor in the scriptures are based upon a scripture in Leviticus chapter 19. That is the foundation of all of the love teachings. And in that scripture, it says, you shall love your neighbor and you shall rebuke him in his sin. In other words, don't let him sin because if you let him sin, you are letting him go on the way to destruction and he will be destroyed forever, eternally damned in hell. That is not love. Therefore, true love rebukes. Seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.